Let's talk about signaling. I don't know what signaling means in other bubbles, but in this bubble, I wanna talk about the idea of what we signal to other people and why we keep making mistakes. In today's podcast, I'm drinking just H2O because it is actually nighttime. It's like 6 p.m. Pacific. I don't usually film this late, um, but the way today went, it just had to be that way. So in today's video, I wanna talk about sort of signaling. I have my notes here. My friend Q and I talk about this all the time. What are we signaling to people? What are we trying to convey to them? Why did I dress the way I did today? I wanted to look like Pride and Prejudice, like femme, but also, you know, I am what I is, so I can't be like hyper femme like some girls can, but this is pretty good. I got a pink thermos. I got like cute white on, like blue. I'm looking at myself over here. I think I look cute, right? I'm trying to signal that I attempted to try to look good today, right? I'm trying to say to the world, I wanted to look presentable, and here I am trying to do that. Now, when we signal, we also misunderstand how easy it is for other people to misunderstand us. I'll give you an example that's personal. So my partner and I have been dating now uh, since June and we're really, really happy and we're getting married and we're so excited and I'm just, oh, I'm so in love with this man. It's such a blessing, right? I feel so lucky to have met a person on this planet that sees me and understands me. But some people reached out to me and said, you know, I'm kind of surprised you ended up with him. And I said, why? And they're like, they're, he's not exactly what I imagined for you. And it's true that the way I described a man, I said I wanted someone masculine, confident, who knows what they want and knows what they're doing. I said I wanted somebody who had already been past a lot of the trauma as a child that we often have to move through in our 20s. I said I wanted a lot of things. And when you meet my partner or look at him, he might not encompass what you imagined. I'm not sure what you imagined when I described that. Actually, you should leave it down in the comment sections down below. What did I describe to you? Because sometimes when I describe what I want, people imagine like a really masculine alpha man who has muscles and a house and millions of dollars. But what I want is somebody who is competent, self-aware, and introspective, right? Someone who's considerate and thoughtful and somebody who cares about my feelings and is able to take care of themselves. Now, all of us can take care of ourselves in good and bad ways. A lot of us have coping mechanisms that we forget signal to other people that it looks like we've got it con you know, under control, but we're really just like getting by. Not everyone is perfect and no one is Superman. So when I say that you're signaling that you've got it all under control, but when you actually get to know someone, they're struggling, there's a spectrum in which we have to uh, be open to exploring. So let's say maybe you're somebody who was born into responsibility and you look like you're handling it really, really well, but secretly you're not ready. You're not ready to go from child to adult. So you kind of pretend you know what you're doing, pretend you're adulting, but secretly you just want to be a kid. That happens to many of us. And then eventually maybe you pretend to be an adult, but you actually should take time being a kid. And maybe you force yourself into this like role that was given to you, this sense of responsibility that you're not exactly ready for or isn't a part of your destiny. So you're at war with yourself. Or maybe you're a perfect prodigy with all the tools, the beauty, the skill, the talent that you need to succeed and yet you fall victim to a mental illness or your ego. Everyone looks like they've got it figured out, but all of us have our own versions of struggle. Or maybe you have figured it out because you've aged into wisdom and so you then can admit when you don't have it together, but you actually basically do have it together. So even pretending you don't have it together doesn't even make sense, but still is so relatable to so many of us. We're not asking for perfection. We're asking for your best. And your best is enough, but you have to at least reach that. And I don't think all of us are doing that when we're so afraid of the unknown. So maybe sometimes you get arrogant and pretend you're perfect, but you really, really, really are struggling. And then maybe sometimes you are just, well, perfect. It's something. We all have something. But at certain stages in a person's life, I think you come to enough self-awareness to say, hey, dude. This is where I'm at right now. I'm not shoving it under a rug. I know I have to face it, but at the moment I just really can't, so I just need a second. I'm on the, uh, on the desire of having that or better. So I'm open to having someone who's so self-aware that even if they're going through something, it's not gonna tear the relationship down, it's not gonna impact our children, and it's not gonna impact our life in a really significant way. It's really something they're doing. So I myself am on my own personal journeys in which my partner can't exactly help me with, but he can be there as a supportive, loving human. My partner has his own things to deal with, which I can't be there to help him fix. They're hit. I'm here to be a supportive, loving human, right? We're both on a spectrum of not being completely without struggle, 
but we're not where we were in our 20s, like our early 20s in the really depths of our struggles. I mean, three, four years ago, you're talking triggers every day, borderline under control, uh, uh, not under control, mania. Uh, The Britney that I was then is not the Britney that I am now. I might be rough around the edges and my personality might not be as inviting, but I'm not a mess. I've got a lot of my shit under control. The parts in which I am a mess, honestly, I'm catching up pretty fast and I think I'll be okay in a year or two. But everything else will have a normal lifelong struggle that I'll have to deal with, like having kids, dealing with illness, dealing with all the stuff that's a surprise to us. So it's not that we're aiming for a perfect cohesive life, but we want to make sure that we're signaling and we're aware of what we're signaling. So I wanted to put out an energy that said, hey, I know what I'm doing. I know what I want. I know what I'm looking for. I I I exuded confidence and I still do because when I go on dates, I only need one to know if you're my husband or wife. And that's what I did with this person. I went on a few first dates during the pandemic and every person I was like, no, no, no. There was one guy who lasted about six months and we had a fun time, but we weren't going to marry each other. And then we went our own ways and he's really great and I hope he's really happy. But then one guy, one guy came into my life and we had a nine hour first date. And now I'm going to marry that man. I didn't even need a second one, but man, I was happy to have a second, third, fourth, fifth, all the way to us meeting each other's families, all the way to me flying to Europe, which I have never done in my whole life. He flew to the United States, which he has never done in his whole life. And we took this leap of faith for a person that we were sure we were going to end up with. He's exactly what I wanted, even if it's not what I described to you as an audience. What I was doing was I was signaling to the right person to hear me. And when he heard me, he went, man, I I think I might get along with Brittany. I think I know what she's saying. I'm not sure because I don't know her. But let's see. We ended up talking and meeting. And then one thing led to another. And here we are. It is true that I don't always speak in the clearest of ways, nor do I speak in a way in which every bubble can understand me. But I really appreciate that the person that I needed to hear me did. Because it was really always just for him anyways, right? I'm working a job right now. So for you guys, I want to be like confident. I want to look good. I want to say to you, I care enough about this job to attempt to look good. Which is why when Destiny goes on podcasts and people make fun of him for coming in PJs. Like look at my car, like look at my house, look at my thing. But a lot of it has to do with being confident with who you are. Like I can tell one thing about you, whether you're here in literally fucking pajamas, by the way. (laughs) They're not. Fuck me. Hold on. Okay. Sweatpants. Okay, whatever. You look like you just rolled out of bed. But what I will say, I mean, you haven't shaved, got a haircut. I shaved for this event. I did my (laughs) Shave your Adam's apple, dog. Have the respect. Show up. Anyway. Oh, okay, yeah. The point is Okay, hold on. When was the last time you shaved? Because you look like you shave regularly. That's more than a five o'clock shadow, okay? It's Ten okay. o'clock shadow, buddy. Yeah, okay. okay, all right. Friday. So slow down. Friday. You're the one that changed. Okay. Anyway, I'm giving you a compliment. Yeah. Okay, sorry, guys. Is that through all the pajamas, the <laughs> I beard, like your whatever? Suit. Let me. Okay. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. Okay. Um, and just forget in case you forget my name. My shirt's sauce. my name. Yeah, sauce right there. Gotcha. But oh, and if you forget who I am, this is my shirt. Sorry. Thank you. you. How you doing, Destiny? <laughs> but the point is, I will say is that you do have confidence, mm-hmm. and that the most attractive quality you tell me, Melina, the most attractive co- uh, quality a man can have is confidence. It's basically because it's saying to the audience, to the people he's seeing, that he doesn't care enough to dress nicely. You always want to dress your Sunday best. If we hop over to the Fresh and Fit bubble, one of the benefits of the Fresh and Fit bubble is it teaches you to be sharp. Go to the gym, work out, look good, guys. You know, if you're going to an event where you're being interviewed, at least wear merch that looks really good. And no offense to Destiny's merch, it's perfect gamer boy merch. I own a lot of it, some of it. I own a hoodie, I own sweatpants. I look relaxed as hell in destiny merch but in fresh and fit fit merch at least by the way in in the in which they present themselves i find them to be much more put together than steven is right sneeko even attempts to dress nice when he's casual in his own streams less so but you can tell he attempted to look fly (laughs) it's the 90s so there's definitely a like a signaling that's happening right there's definitely a communication that's happening okay I want to think about, hold on, I'm looking at my notes. Mm. You know when people say like, uh, oh, I don't, okay, I don't know if you guys just saw this in the news, but there was controversy, I think in Missouri, where they told women um, who belonged to the government there that they had to wear jackets. They couldn't have no sleeves because it wasn't professional, right? They're holding them to the same standard as the men. And some people were like, this is awful. This is like, uh, oh, what's that show with the babies and the, I don't watch TV. There's that show about women going back and they are only made to have babies. Everyone's like, oh my gosh, it's going to be like that show all over again. 
it's just professional attire. Like when I was a young kid, when I was about 14 or 15, you couldn't show your tattoos if you worked at a grocery store. So you were also not allowed to have short sleeves. But now you're allowed to show your tattoos and piercings. Hell, you can even have blue hair now at a grocery store. Times change, bubble shift. But there is such a thing as professional attire. You can signal to the world when you're trying to look fly. My parents are great examples. They dress really nice in general, especially when they're going to work. They have their work clothes. My dad has a a merch he made for his own business, so he wears those. They're polo shirts. They're nice. They're very high end. And my dad's an engineer, so he works, you know, designing machines, but then he works in a shop to help out the guys, and he goes back and forth. So even though um, his primary job isn't working in the shop, even if even if he's there, his merch is actually made to look nice and be durable for the shop. Really, my dad's a genius. It's like he wanted his guys to still look nice even though they were working in a shop, right? Because it signals to the customer, we take ourselves seriously. There's nothing wrong with wanting to look sharp, but there is something wrong for doing it for the wrong reasons. If you're only looking good because you want to appeal to a group of people, but it's not even even for yourself, that's sad, bro. You always want to make sure that you're signaling to the world an authentic part of yourself while maintaining some sort of balance between privacy and being open. So if you're naturally not the most professional person and it takes kind of a lot for you to dress nicely, that's okay. No big deal, right? But you have to understand that it's okay to find professional clothing that work within your personality type. You don't have to betray exactly who you are in order to be authentic. Now, This coincides with something that my partner and I were just discussing this. We'll hear people say things like, just be yourself and girls will like you. Well, yourself might not be as compatible as it could be, nor are you guaranteed to be in a spot in life where you're your best. So yes, be yourself, but that doesn't guarantee you a partner, even if you're the most amazing, rich, wonderful person you've ever been. It doesn't guarantee you the partner you're looking for. So what people forget in these like bubbles, no matter what bubble you're in, mine included, no matter where you are, you have to kind of dress for the occasion, but also find a balance between dressing for the occasion and for yourself and to signal to your future partner. But nothing is guaranteed in life. So if I say to somebody, hey, be yourself, but the person they are deep and down is like a serial killer. Well, maybe that's not great advice, right? Maybe the advice advice should be face yourself. Have an introspective moment with yourself. Have a conversation with yourself. Be kind to yourself. And then like Eminem says, bull yourself just the right amount to get yourself to do what you need to do, right? It's all about that balance. So, okay, I'm looking over my notes. Okay, I'll give you a good example. So my, um, sometimes I'll, I'll tell stories. And depending on the bubble that's listening, they'll take, uh, they'll decide who I am in a very specific way. So example, um, I've had sex with men and women. Oh, wait, we should play a game. In the comment sections, fill out what stereotype you think I am. I'll give you an example. Okay, so I've had sex with men and women. What bubble does that put me into? Well, probably the bisexual bubble, right? Or maybe I'm just a straight girl who eats box for money. Or maybe I'm just a straight girl who makes out with girls for men, right? I could be either. But I am a bisexual woman who has dated and had sex with both men and women. Okay, um, I've had a foursome. What stereotype does that put me under? What box does that make people think? Oh, Brittany's had a foursome. Oh, I know what girls have foursomes. Do you? Because I had a foursome because I was dating a guy and he had two girlfriends and they were dating each other and they were all together and then I was the fourth. And because I was dating him and I was also having sex with them, we all just had sex with each other because there's love there and commitment for them and commitment for me from him and You know, um, there was a female dom in that relationship, so their woman was the center, and then it was three of us who were kind of her submissives who moved around her. So another thing people might hear is, oh, Brittany had a foursome with one guy and three girls, right? So that must mean the guy got all the attention from the girls. Oh, no, no, no. No, 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 no. The guy was also a submissive, and the woman who got worshipped was the dom. So, okay, so depending on the scenario, you might, again, you're starting to form an idea around who I am, and you're like, oh, that's weird. That's super strange. Okay, I have sex with my friends, or I used to. I'm monogamous now, (laughs) but, like, I used to have sex with my friends. What does that look like to you? What does that sound like? Well, to me, it means we are going to watch anime, hang out, and be like, hey, bro, you want to have sex? And then they're like, yeah, I've had threesomes with my friends. What does that mean? Well, my friends, there are a couple. Sometimes we have threesomes. Am I the guesting girl? Am I the focus? No. The other partner's the focus, the they in the relationship. Okay, so it's me, him, and they, and we focus on them because they are the star. I don't want to be the star. I might be the guest, but I ain't the star. 
they're the star. You know what I'm saying? And that's our past life. We don't do that anymore. We haven't had sex in over three years, not just because of COVID, but because our lives went in different directions. We're still friends. We still hang out. We still call each other, but we haven't had sex in over three plus years, right? That's not our relationship anymore, but we're still good friends. Um, My partner even said something to the effect of like, oh, that's kind of weird. Like you have friends you've had sex with. I was like, yeah. And I know in certain bubbles, like they don't even let their girls around men they've had sex with. But the idea that I wouldn't be around my friends because we've had threesomes is weird. Also, in our threesomes, I've never had sex with my male friend. He's never been inside me. I've never on purpose touched his penis. We have both literally been tops focusing on the bottom. So we've never had to do anything. It's always been us for them. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, next stereotype. Okay. So people might hear me and say, oh, oh, I love drugs. Okay. This is a great one. So I love drugs. Um, I've been to sex dungeons. I've witnessed orgies. Uh, you might think, oh, Brittany's the kind of person who's just always embodies a hedonist. I'm very (laughs) anti-hedonism. Hedonism is not the answer. Suffering and discipline is the answer. I'm a stoic. You know, suffering and, and, and discipline is more my game than hedonism. I think hedonism is probably a path to unhappiness, but I think discipline is the path to joy. So I'm biased. This is my bubble. Um, I'm not a, like a casual sex person. I've never had a one night stand. I've only slept with friends or people I've known. I've always gone STI tested, tested, except for my first guy I was with. My very first guy I slept with when he was 19 and I was 21, I think. When we first had sex, we had no condoms, no birth control no STI testing. And he, that's basically never happened again. Every other person I've been with, we have been safe, safe sex, right? Um, people might look at me and think, oh, Brittany's a hedonist who just wants to have sex, just wants to consume, just wants to do drugs. But I'm not. I'm just a person who likes these things as well as anime, as well as working out, as well as hanging out with my family. They're just things to do, ways to express myself, ways to be with people. But I'm signaling to the world um, possibly that I'm fast and easy, that I've had sex with hundreds of people, that I am in, in at sex dungeons every night, which technically I used to be, but they were really BDSM dungeons, so sex wasn't always happening because in my bubble, people don't always use sex in BDSM. It's not a requirement, right? So when you're signaling to the world who you are, remember that people will misunderstand you and that's okay because you're really trying to find the people that will understand you. So instead of getting upset that people don't see you, which even I get my feelings hurt over that too, it's really about what you're looking for. So I remember when I came on the YouTube channel and I shared the levels, I was signaling to the world like, hi, is anyone out there who wants to talk to me in this way? Is there anyone out there doing the same thing I'm doing? Is there anyone out there who are who's thinking about things the way I'm thinking about them? I could really use people to talk to. Recently, a group of people and I watched The Holy Mountain, which is the film that I feel really transformed my life and quote unquote popped on my bubbles. But when we were watching that film, what we were really asking ourselves is, how do we relate to one another, our humanity? I don't watch films to critique them. I watch films to see if I can see myself in the chaos, right? So when I'm watching something, experiencing something with people, when I'm looking at art and trying to relate it back to myself, I'm really asking myself, Myself. What am I doing here? Who am I? And is there anywhere in this like, group of people who I'm watching it with, do they relate to me? Do we relate to each other? You know what I mean? So when I watch movies with friends, when I take my own personal time to like connect with people through art, I'm really trying to see if we can see each other. And if we can't, that's okay. But for all of us, we're doing it for different reasons. I'm not watching it to critique the film. I'm watching it to see if it shows me anything about my own humanity. And I think that's a different way to watch movies. Like I don't really watch film and I don't care how it's made. When I watched everything everywhere all at once, I don't care about the science or the magic or how the thingies work. All I care about is do I see myself and the humanity part of the writing in this story? And the answer is yes. For me, I see myself a lot in the chaos of the world, but then I find that one sliver of peace and and and. and calmness in the chaos because that's my goal my goal is to end up uncle iroh in the spirit world chilling right i want to end up at peace in my life and i'm not wise enough to get there yet but i hope to get there i think a lot of people saw the levels and felt like i was signaling to them that i was better than them the truth is is that we all think we're better than everyone else so i'm no different than you but i don't actually think i'm better than you i think i have a different relationship with reality than you do which is neither good nor bad it's just different I don't think being a five matters, and I don't think being a two matters. I think you should seek out your joy and be happy, 
but you have to be careful about what you're signaling to the world because you might have a harder time finding that happiness or maybe you won't. I was watching a um, a Manosphere video, sort of a, a interview with, I don't, I'm so sorry, I don't remember names, but Adam's podcast, the one Destiny's been on, he had this guy on that really stood out to me. I'm so sorry, I don't know names. And he said like, after this millions of dollars and 200 people he slept with, he really just wants a family. And when I have my children, it's going to be the same way because family is important. And that's the thing America's kind of straying away from, but we are coming back to it. If you look at what's happened recently, I don't know, I know you don't go to the movies, but uh, Pandora, the most recent movie, is super Avatar. family. Avatar, yeah. right? The, the, yeah. Sorry, I said Pandora. That's right. that, well, that's um, the planet, but yeah, you're right. Avatar, it, the m- recent movie, is super family-centric. Hmm. And if you look at it, Disney has looked and realized, holy shit, we got to stop shitting on families. We got to stop with this whole woke shit because we're losing money. Yeah. Like, Avatar's Dis- not woke? It's not. Uh-huh. not, not dude, well, not a single not. woke. There's not some fucking... No shit. Well, then I'm going to go see it. There's I'll not some transgender it. avatar. That's what I thought they were going guy. to do. That's why I haven't been to see it yet. But no. if you're telling me... Watch the I don't movie. go because I don't have three and a half hours to fucking dedicate yes, to a do. goddamn movie. Yes, I really don't get that kind of... You're good with that. that I, I I, so and I want to add on to that. So I definitely agree with Mike Rowe's perspective because that's what he wants. But I also agree with your perspective. And I would tell you, get away, get away from those loser friends of yours who tell you don't have kids. Because, listen, I'm telling you, it's like a woman starting an OnlyFans, right? Here we go. It seems good and lucrative at the, yes. at the beginning, you know, going out, fucking a bunch of girls. I've done it. I've fucked like 200 plus chicks in my life, right? But it's like, it's like using drugs. It's like, yeah, it feels good right now, oh but the long-term repercussions it. are not good and right. i realized and it's another thing like this it's like it's like an addiction it's like you just got to keep on the fucking you got to get that next lay you got to fuck that next yeah. girl you got to yeah. keep doing it but it's a zero ri what am i doing like yeah this girl's like i'm busting a nut like that's it yeah. what, for the guy you're saying what am I doing there's no this? end in sight hedonism you know? knows end in sight you... no no hedonism exactly yes. like andrew tate said there we did go. a fantastic interview with him yes. right you have to continuously add to hedonism you have to keep on you have to keep on this hedonistic cycle and at the end of the day like the biggest thing that red pilled me on kids and stuff is like my my brother my brother is complete opposite of me he is i think he's 31 now he's gonna be 31 in in february he has three kids two boys and a girl these are my uh, nephews and niece right and it blows my mind every time i come around they're so happy to see me. Like Uncle Jonathan is here. You're the fun uncle. They love you're the me. uncle. And when they come, <laughs> when they when they when they come around me, they hug me, they kiss me. And I'm just like, dude. They're like, take me I away from great. dad. He's I the would, worst. No, I, I'm. I went to I went to Disney and I bought like two hundred dollar lightsabers for the kids. Mm-hmm. Like I will do anything for these kids. And God forbid if something were to come into physically threatening these kids, I would fucking kill you those better people. Better believe it. Yeah. And this part of my brain that was activated through th- seeing my brother's children, I, I have so much love for these. When I was in my 20s, and people were like, oh, let me show my niece, let me show my nephew, let me show my son. I'm like, get away from me, you're weird. Yeah. Like, I don't want to see this. But now that I've experienced this, I'm like, oh my God, like, this brings me more happy than making the millions of the, that I've made. This brings me more happiness than fucking some hot 22-year-old off a of Bumble, you know? It'll, it'll yeah. make you realize two things. Hey, a, I don't want these little suckers right now. I do. But I do want them in the future. Okay. I like, want them. That's what kids... I'll, well, I'll, I'm ready to meet a girl, vet her hardcore within a year, yeah. and start pumping these babies out. Okay, let's, I'm going to ask you straight up. Give us a paint us a picture of what your wife's gonna be. Age, Ooh, look, here we go. Asian, not Asian, <laughs> Blasian, hot, this, that, Blasian. height, ideal. Paint your perfect women, her career, her wife, her family. Like, give us MLD's dream woman. Go if, ahead. If, if I'm like MLD, if age, demographics, psychographics, give me the whole thing. <laughs> if I'm factory producing children, <laughs> I want her as tall as possible. I'll date a six foot four bitch. I do not care. Wow. <laughs> okay. Not, I didn't say date. You're marrying this well, woman. Well, I mean, yeah, okay, date, yeah. yeah, date eventually. So, so you're so, Amazon woman. I you're watching care. Avatar. So, Go ahead. <laughs> my, my ideal woman is, is white. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Oh said. my God! You're recruiting so, WNBA. So, so, so. She, she's six four. She said she's white. She's white, Elena blonde Deladon. hair, uh, green eyes, feminine, introverted, uh, out of a family where she respects the father. Ideally, she's the last born because I'm the first born. Uh, okay. Eight, like uh, birth order does matter with relationships. Got it. Hmm. 
<laughs> age? Um, if you're 38, how old is she? If you're getting married this year, 18, ideally. 18, yeah. bro. Yeah, ideally. But I, I will go as old if I had to be ideal. Yeah. Like anything after 28 is pushing it. Because There's a big difference between a woman. These will tell you between an 18 year old woman yes. and a 28 year old woman. There's a major difference. I don't bro. care. Th that I know girl, what I want. No, John, that you but do you have to do care. care. Listen, that girl just fucking took her SATs. I, this girl's already listen, has listen, a listen. job. It's a big difference. No, listen, I know what I want. I agree. I, with you, I'm not. I, I, I know, know what you want. know what you want. I know what I want. I, this is your dream, girl. At I'm 18, not, I'm not denying had, it. At 18, she's had less stick. She's had less trauma. Thank you. She's had less bullshit. That's right. She's had less fucking garbage that I have to. Because when you all good. Listen, when you date a woman, you also date her relationship past and her her luggage and her emotional baggage. How many? Would do you want your girl to be a virgin? I mean, I ideally, I, I, ideally, yeah, but that's not yes. possible. Today. You ideally, do, yeah. What the fuck, yeah. You do want your girl? Ideally, yes. Wow. Listen, every guy wants ideally. to. Every guy what wants to fuck? have children. Every Bro. guy wants to have children with a virgin. But I mean, whether it's wow. possible, I, mean, listen, dude, body, body I, I can tell you straight doesn't. up. I, whatever girl I end up with. I do not want a virgin what if wife. She, this what, is what in if the fucking like, medieval times and like what, prima nocta. Let, listen, what is what, happening right now? Well, what, 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 wait, 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 wait. What if she had like a 35 body count? No, you just went from zero to 35. I'm asking you. I'm cool with four. I'm cool with 10. I'm asking you 35. Zero? I'd rather have a girl 10 than zero. Zero? So 18? That's a little like... Well, that's how uh, it used to be. Dude, again, I think you're. I think you're prioritizing sex, and you're prioritizing the progeny. Yes. You know, a, a no, girl I'm not, with a 10... I'm not even prioritizing... It's not a sex thing. It's like... I'm not trying to take my wife's virginity. That's Why not? just me. I guess that's, that's how it used to be. That's, uh, used to this be. Is not, this is not. But he was also signaling that he didn't care about the woman he was going to marry. He was like, oh, I, I'd, I'd be with an 18-year-old. I don't care as long as she can make babies. The way he talked about women, the way he kept trying to trigger the women on the panel, like he'd be like, oh, you're triggered, bro. You're triggered. The adolescent, like teenage boy energy he was signaling didn't coincide with the idea of being a good father. Like he kept saying like, I want like so many boys. I want to make them. I want to like choose to have boys. I want to like pick a young girl to have those boys. I want to, you know, he would say things like being a family like matters, like having kids matters. And I'm like, okay, that sounds like very family oriented. But then he'll say like, I'm going to make them in a lab with an 18 year old. And then it's like, well, that's less about making love and having a family and more about building a genetic army which is like very monkey, like very evolution, but like not very introspective. So that's fine. But then you're not going to have a girl who's like, yeah, I want to be a good mother and I want to care about my kids. You're going to have a woman who says, oh, yeah, I'll make babies for you. One hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, I'll make a baby for you. A million dollars. You're not going to have a mother. You're going to have a paid incubator, which is fine. Lots of women do it. There are surrogates in the world. But again, you're getting a paid incubator. You're not getting a mother. Right. Like what woman goes, yeah, I'm going to I want to end up with a guy who wants to like pick his children and, and like create them in a lab or whatever, which is fine. But like creepy. So you want to do that, which is whatever you want to pick the sex of the baby, whatever. And then you want just like a baby making machine. Well, it's going to be women who want your money. And then these men go, I can't believe women just want me for my money. Well, you're signaling to the world that you want a woman who only wants you for your money. So if you signal to the world you want a woman to have a baby for you, you're not signaling to wholesome women who come from modest backgrounds who want to have a loving husband and a loving family. Like if you want the 90s American version of a family, a father and a mother and kids and a nuclear family, you got to have love there. And you're not going to have that as a 40-year-old with an 18-year-old in the same way you would with somebody more on your level, right? Like even other men were like, that's kind of a weird want. But if you're being very animal about it, if you're being very much we're monkeys on a planet, then sure, do that. And since I think we are evolved animals on a planet and we're basically no better than animals, go ahead and build your incubator babies. What color is your baguette? It's kind of interesting. Like I'm on OnlyFans and a lot of people would say, oh, you're signaling to the world you're one of those women who are on OnlyFans. But the dilemma is I'm on the alternative side of OnlyFans. Like I'm not a traditionally pretty woman in the same way that other women are. I don't have a dainty nose. Um, I have very ethnic features. My hair is curly. Most cute girls on the internet have straight hair. So I'm not very typical. So do you really think my audience is typical? 
Do you really think my audience is not like more unique, more probably anime watchers since I love anime. They love anime. I love my audience on OnlyFans, but they're definitely into my look. And my look is very different, which is why I have a very small OnlyFans audience. Um, Though if you want to join, please join. But like I have a very small OnlyFans audience. I make a majority of my money on Patreon doing calls, talking about philosophy. But the guys who don't like me, I'm not a philosophy girl. I'm an OnlyFans girl. But in my OnlyFans circles, other women are like, you're not an OnlyFans girl, Brittany. You're an alternative girl who's just doing this to like basically for fun, but also a job. And it's funny because I meet some of these really traditional, beautiful women. And it's clear like they are trying to make as much money as possible on OnlyFans. They're dedicating their whole lives to OnlyFans. That's just a side hustle for me. My dedication is YouTube. But because I do OnlyFans, I'm never going to be a YouTube girl again. I'm only OnlyFans. Which is why it's so hard to know who you're signaling to. Because again, in BDSM circles, it's normal to be sex positive. It's normal to to go to nudist groups. It's normal to be um, adventurous. Like even in Seattle where I I did work for progressive, centrist, liberal families, they're not very SJW. They're not very liberal, but they're pretty, pretty Democrat. They went to nudist events just to be there to show their kids like this is how some people live. Um, This is an art venue where there's a nude model. And for some families like in Catholic, Muslim, Jewish, very religious fam- like families, maybe that would be crazy and outlandish and you're signaling to the world that you're loose and you don't value the body and nothing is sacred. Everyone is experiencing a different reality, hence bubbles, right? Everyone's having a different relationship with their bodies, a different relationship with what they want to convey to the world. And I think that's what's so important to pay attention to. Because again, even though Destiny, Stephen, sleeps with women that aren't his wife, and even though Fresh and Fit both want to sleep with women that aren't their wives when they get them, right? They're not the same kind of open, right? They have different ways of sleeping with other people who aren't their wives. And paying attention to the details is the difference. So when I signal to the world, I want a man who's confident. I want a man who's sex positive. I want a man that's masculine in his own way, feminine in his own way if he wants to be, that he's introspective and self-aware. I am not really describing anyone in particular, but everyone is going to imagine what they want and who that fits into, like what that fits into. Maybe it's a fresh and fit guy. Maybe it's a Steven. Maybe it's somebody else. For me, it's my guy. My guy, you know, he he fits my requirements, my criteria, but he isn't what you're going to imagine. He's what I want. Do you get what I'm saying? So we all want people who are open, honest, transparent, all those things. <clears throat> but again, what does that mean? I just saw, um, what podcast was it? I was watching. Maybe it was the same one. No, no, no. I was watching Flagrant. <gasps> Flagrant's a great example. I'm watching Flagrant. And they're talking about their girls' body counts. You know, uh, Andrew Santino was there. And he was like, wait, you've never asked your girls, like, about, like, not her body count, but, like, you know, who have you been with? And they're like, no, I don't want to know that. I think one time we were doing that thing. Everybody's done that with your significant other or your wife or your girlfriend. Or at some point, you're like, you know, I want to hear I want to hear some of the history no. for fun. You never, want none of it? None. Never. No, no. None of it. Give me a couple. I want to figure it out. What? Nah. Because I want to know. You How know do you I mean? bring it up? You're at dinner. Did you, did you ha- like, who have you had? You ha- have you, what, have you straight outside? Have you had fucking something else? Have you ever f- licked a chick? Have you ever fucked, you know what I mean? Like, oh, the girl stuff is fun. Girl stuff. I don't want to know. You don't want to know? Yeah, the girl stuff is fun. You don't want to know at all. Agile egos over there. Yeah, yeah. Why? Yeah. What do you think your wife didn't fuck anybody before you? I'm sorry, do you think comedians are secure people? I mean, he doesn't mind. Has he put teeth in and out? He doesn't mind his wife getting stuffed with dick. You guys got to hit with your you pearl don't want to know. You don't want to know. No, I, I know. Everybody, yeah. everyone, no one wants to know, but you know it's a reality. No, you want to know. Yeah. I just want to fuck it. I want. I wanted to hear if we were sharing at the beginning when we f- were first dating. I wanted. To, I was like, you know, what's your history like? You know the number, body count. Yeah, yeah well, uh, it's like 109, no. 110. Oh, hold on, net. what? No, bro. <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> Check the Carfax, bro. That's crazy. Yeah. What you just said 109. Imagine girl with triple digit body. <laughs> it's out there, dude. Oh, dude, just it has there. to be out there. Yeah, what do you mean? It's, it's probably it's out, out there. there a lot. Way more than you know. Yeah. No. no. Way. Yes, dude. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. dude. Way yeah. more than you think. Ugh, when God. a girl says like 10, she means 30. 
Yeah. You think they divide it by three always? A hundred percent. You mean multiply? Oh, they movie? divide their number by three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, of course. Really? Yes. There's guys no way. Guys multiplying his number by three. Yeah. Yes. No, I don't American do that. Pie too. Check it out. Good. Movie. I don't do that. That was that was a great. I, I I believe that wholeheartedly. Yeah, I do. I, think I don't want to believe that. I think they cut it in half and half. Yeah. They, I don't want to believe. And guys that multiply. Well. That makes sense. Sorry, man. Whatever makes you sleep at night. Yo, do you think you think that your girl has slept with three times the amount of guys she's told you? Did you just? I need to make it real. I didn't say body count. You walk I said, around. I want to hear about a couple of the previous. <laughs> Why you want to hear about that? Yes. Yes. So I just want to see. Weird. That's what weird. are you going to get out of that? What are you going to get out of that? I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure. You you, you, off she got good taste. Yeah, huh? that's some yes. fuck shit. Make sure she got good taste. Imagine all the dudes previous were just some lame ass dudes. And I'm like, fuck. Am I one of those? So strange. My partner and I, like, I think. I don't remember which date it was, but right away I told him every partner I've been with, like what it was like. Um, if he asks any questions, I'll show him pictures. You want to see pictures? I got pictures. Like I am not ashamed of what I've done and I am honest and transparent and he doesn't care because I'm honest and transparent. You know what would really upset my partner is if I lied or hid something from him. If I didn't answer his question, that would be fucked because we both consented to a relationship. We're open, honest, and transparent. So if we're not going to tell each other, you know, our own lived experience if you want to marry someone and keep them a mystery that's your choice preference it is not mine I want to know everything about my partner I want to know how they feel today I want to know how their body feels I want to know everything they want to tell me right at in their own due time of course but that's what he wants as well so again when you say I want an open and transparent partner you might be thinking you have one but you don't know their body count because you don't want to know which is different than me who says, I want an open and transparent partner, which means I want to know everything, everything. Leave nothing a mystery. I don't like mysteries and I don't like surprises. I like a confident person who can own up to their life decisions. So I like people who are open and transparent. But again, what does that mean? So when you're signaling to the world, when you're, you know, displaying to the world, when you're peacocking to the world, make sure you're peacocking what you meant to peacock. And then at the same time, accept that you might do, might do everything exactly correct and still get people who misunderstand you. That is the heart, second part of the hardest part of what I experience constantly. Because sometimes I'll talk to people and I feel like I just explained myself so perfectly. And then they'll say it back to me and I'm like, that is not what I said. That is not what I said. But I understand how from their perspective, they heard different things. Like when I say, um, I've slept with my friends, they're really lovely people, I love them, but I don't wanna date them. And that is to me is casual. Some people might hear the word casual and think one night stands, but I don't have one night stands, I've never had one. So for me, when I say casual, I just mean someone you're not in a relationship with. I don't mean somebody that's a one night stand, though one night stands are also casual. I just consider everyone who isn't my partner casual. That's Brittany. That might not be your language, but it is mine. So if you're not someone I'm dating, I'm not a boyfriend, girlfriend with you. I'm not girlfriend, girlfriend with you. I'm not a partner with you. We're not thinking about getting married. You're casual, boo. Unless we're getting married, you're casual, even if we're dating. To some extent, depending on how long. Because if we're dating for three months, it's like that's pretty a big deal for Brittany now because I don't go past a second, I don't go past a first date. But in the past, I I, I definitely definitely dated people for longer. Like, oh, we've been dating for three months. We're kind of casual. We're getting to know each other. No titles yet. But now, current Brittany, she doesn't even do that because I don't have time for any casual. I definitely turned 30 and I went straight for okay, marriage or nothing, because I'm looking for a life partner. Um, sorry. Marriage or lovers, <laughs> but nothing in between. No dating three months to see where it goes. No dating a year to see where it goes. I don't, I don't need to do that anymore. So again, even that, when I told the world I'm doing a courting thing that I told my partner, like, hey, we're going to have one date. And if we don't like each other, that's it. Hey, FYI, you're going to meet my family almost right away and vice versa. Hey, I'm going to fly to Europe and I'm going to, I'm going to see where you live and what you're doing, right? Like I put the foot down of what I wanted because I'm confident and I know what I want. And he took that and he was like, this is great. Other people took it and they're like, honestly, dating you is exhausting. And I'm like, cool, bye. You think dating me is exhausting and you want to spend a lifetime with me? Absolutely not, ma'am. So I got to be my authentic self, open, honest, transparent, and I still got exactly what I wanted from the universe. I have the perfect job, a perfect life, and a perfect partner for me, not for you, not objectively, just subjectively for me. And I 
I feel so lucky. Now, I wasn't always good at knowing exactly what I wanted. I had to live out of 20s where I experimented, where I tested, where I asked myself, like, is this what I want? Is this what I want? Is this what I want? Most people don't know what they want. Most men I meet don't know what they want. I'll meet a man and we'll be on a date and I'll be like, hey, do you want three kids? And he's like, I don't know how many kids I want. That's crazy. Why are you dating me? If we just want to have sex, let's just have sex. But if you want to date me long term, you know I want to be a mom. How do you not have an idea of how many kids you want? Right? Like not even an inkling. So men, women, non-binary people, it doesn't matter. A lot of people don't know what they want. And that's perfectly okay because life is the journey to find out what you want. That's literally what else is the reason for existence. You might think you're a gift from God. You might think, I don't know, there's like a like a simulation happening. I just think we're an evolved species on a planet living in an ecosystem over time in which this is our curtain product. This is our curtain state of being. Who humans will be in 100, 200, 3,000 years, I don't know. But the people we are today, this is it, baby. This is the height of our technology. The height of our wisdom is conspiracy theories and fucking Google and our obsession with TikTok and YouTube. And honestly, I ain't that mad about it. It's a little shallow, but I mean, it's something, right? At least this is our, this is our life. This is pretty good. I'm not going to complain much, considering that just a generation ago, my pa- my mom grew up without water and electricity in Iraq. So I'm going to say it's a win. Even my parents, my mom was uh, range married, her first marriage, basically, to her cousin, of course, because, you know, the Middle East is crazy. And uh, it's fine, no judgment. And um, she ended up divorcing him, becoming the first woman in her family to get divorced. And she married my dad, which is a love marriage. And she had, you know, 10 kids. We, they raised 10 kids together. And I look at their story and I remember, like, I really have a choice. It's hard. It's hard because their parents ostracized them from the family for a long time for bringing disgrace. And then the family eventually embraced them again and that's all well and good. But life is too short not to get married out of love for love. Life is too short not to have what you want in life. Now, I'm not saying you have to get married for love only. But I'm saying that that was the lesson I really learned from my parents, which is like, you are allowed to fall in love and get married. You're allowed. Even if it's not exactly what the world wants for you, that is okay. Now, if you get married just to have kids and you're not really in love, you can marry for business. Marriage is definitely a business contract, 100% legal business contract, okay? But that means you're going to have a very specific type of life. So for all these men who are always so worried that women are going to sleep with them for their money. Stop telling bitches you have money. Oh, but you can't because you need the money to get bitches, right? So that's the problem. You don't want women who are gold diggers, but the only way you get pussy is by flashing your money. So be something greater than your money. Be something better than how much you make. Be something worth bragging about that isn't your dollar bill. Plenty of people in this country, plenty of people around the world, are, you know, poor but rich in spirit, right? For all those people that are so obsessed with being rich to get girls, you cannot be surprised they're gold diggers. That's kind of the signaling you're giving. You are signaling for gold diggers to fall in love with you, right? Like if I was you, I wouldn't even tell bitches I got money. I would pretend I was poor and see if they love you for you. You know what I'm saying? Women marry poor men every day. I see it all the time. And by poor, what do we mean? right? Like, what does that even mean? I feel poor and I make 80K and I'm living paycheck to paycheck because of my medical bills and because of my, even my collaborations, like to go travel, that's like $1,500 a pop every time. And you don't make that money back right away, right? It's like a long-term game. So I have to be very strategic with how I spend my money versus some people who are making like 30, 40K. I wouldn't even be collabing if I made 30, 40K. I'd be collabing only online. I would never be traveling, right? But on 80K, I can budget it in, sort of right? After rent and after all my bills and after all my da 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 da. I'm a middle class person signaling to the world that I am still in the struggle mode, but getting there, that I have goals and aspirations, but I'm still working on it, that I am in love because I am in love. Like it's a real love marriage. I'm really lucky. But also I found a man who's not threatened by my job, not threatened by me being on OnlyFans, not threatened by who I am, not threatened by my philosophy, not threatened about how I live my life. So he can take me being a normal, struggling (laughs) YouTuber who's on OnlyFans and he still understands like, yeah, I'm not a millionaire YouTuber like some people and that's great, but maybe um, one day, you know, but he's definitely not marrying me for my money, right? He's marrying me for the woman that I am and the mother that I will be 
And I'm not marrying him for his money, right? Because I make more. I am marrying him because of the man he is and the father he will be. We are in love. And that struggle we'll face is a struggle my parents faced in every generation before. We will have money. We will build budgets. We will struggle. We won't be able to afford everything we want, like vacations every month or traveling every month. We can't do that. But what we can do is save our money, buy our house, have our babies, and have literally the best thing the whole world can offer us. A real family. Real people who you get to grow old with in a significant way and not just because we're lonely. I heard that guy say, you know, you don't want to get old and die alone without any kids by your side. But the thing is, you can't have kids just because you're afraid to die alone. You should make babies because you're making love. And you have these beautiful children who are products of that love, minus situations in which awful things happen and women get pregnant and those babies are still loved because they were made by women that loved them. They were brought to term by women that loved them, okay? So here are these babies in the world that are beautiful and wonderful and they are hopefully brought into a family that is full of love and not born into a family where the father's never around, where you're Andrew Tate saying get women pregnant in foreign countries and send them $100 a month and don't be a present father. You don't want an Elon Musk that has kids from every woman to have the genetic line he wants and he's never home reading them stories at night. You want people who are present. Unless you don't. But then don't complain that your kids hate you, they don't want to see you, you weren't a present father slash mother, and you can't complain that only gold diggers are interested in you is if the only thing that gets women in your pants is your money. So remember what you're signaling to the world because it will be confusing if you wake up one day and you're like, why am I 90 years old and a billionaire with no like no real good women near me? Well, because you only attracted gold diggers your whole life because the only thing you had was your money. What's that saying? It's easier for a camel to move through the eye of a needle than a rich man to get into the gates of heaven. I'm just saying, signal correctly, right? Whatever that means, signal correctly. Okay, I like being really honest with where I'm at in life. I think it helps people understand that no matter what I'm signaling, whatever you're assuming about me, there's always more to know. Like some people might hear me go, oh, I make 80K, so Brittany must be living amazingly. I was until I got diagnosed with lupus. Until I got diagnosed with lupus, I actually was doing great with money. And then I got diagnosed with lupus and it all just like went downhill because I had unexpected bills I had to pay. A couple, you know, $2,000 a month is a lot of money, guys. That's a lot of money just to give to, you know what I mean? But don't worry. it's We're almost near the end of having to dish out all this money up front because now I'm going to get on a understanding schedule of my illness. But I understand that people might see me and think like, Somebody said Brittany has fuck you money once. And I was like, am I signaling to the world that I have fuck you money because I make 80K? I'm literally not making that much money, guys. When you take out tax and you take out rent, which is like $25,000 a year, you take out tax, which is about 15. You take out all your bills and all your like, you, you don't have that much money left over when you're when you're spending that much on healthcare and stuff, right? But I appreciate the idea that I signaled to the world that I was making fuck you money. But I'm not. Until I am secure, until I have six months of expenses and a savings until I have money and I don't even care if I buy a $1,500 dress, which I could never afford and I've never purchased for myself, I'm not making fuck you money. Even Andrew Scholes on Flagrant said, um, yeah, like even if I made like 10 million, it's not enough. Because once you're rich enough or famous enough, now your family starts looking for you. People start asking you for money. You have to make a decision if you're going to give people that money. It's not as easy as I'll be rich forever. Fuck you money is for me long-term money. That's like money you have forever. I don't have that money, girl. What are you talking about? But I signaled somehow to the world that I was making fuck you money. The reason I'm really transparent about what I make is because I want people to know it's hard out here. Even if you're making 80 to six figures, it can be hard out here. So don't beat yourself up too much, right? Because I'm new to this money. I have I mostly made about like uh, 50, 20 to 50K usually. Up to 65 was my most when I was in Seattle working as a nanny, but I was also working YouTube. I always work two jobs. This is the one time I'm working one job and making 80K is pretty significant for me. But again, I'm new to this level of income and it's still, when rent's going up as much as it is, it's hard. So I understand why people have roommates and people had, um, uh, you know, living with their parents and people have all these things. I understand but what I'm trying to say is, look how I signaled to some people that I made fuck you money when I really don't, right? That's why I'm so honest and transparent. Okay. Ooh, that reminds me though. When you think about people who live with their parents, what are you signaling? Well, it depends. 
My my siblings, some of them live with my parents, but they're like college graduates and they pay rent. Right. So it's like, yes, I live with my parents because they live in California and a one bedroom is eighteen hundred dollars. Why spend eighteen hundred when you can spend six hundred and live with your mom? Right. And my parents don't care. So why not? Or you're living with your parents. You're a bum. You've never worked a day in your life and you're living in the basement playing video games. It's like these are two types of people who live with their parents. Right. So when you say I live with my parents, what are you signaling to the world? Well, depends. People aren't going to have the best relationship with those words. But if you twist it, not twist it, change the perspective and you say, I'm actually a college graduate. I have a full time job. They pay me this much. It's not enough to really justify moving out. So I live with my parents and I pay rent. That's a different story than I live with my parents because I can't hold down a job and I'm a bum. So again, when you look at your life and you wonder why you're not communicating or bringing the right people into your life, what are you signaling? What are you telling the world with how you dress and how you talk and how you convey your feelings? It's not it's not easy to figure out, but it's not too hard either. You just have to have a better relationship with yourself. So ask yourself, who do I want to be and what am I signaling to the world? Like here on YouTube, I'm actually pretty nice and I censor myself a whole ton because of TOS and also because I want to try to sort of talk to a little bit more people than just people who are exactly like me, right? I don't want to talk to the general public and I definitely don't want to talk to certain bubbles because they're never going to hear me. They're only ever going to see me as one thing. But the hope is that you signal enough to invite the core group you want and then a little bit of uniqueness so you're not just in a, what's this called? An echo chamber, a circle jerk. You know, you don't want to be an echo chamber, but you want to definitely know who your group of people are and then you want to know who you can adventure out to hang out with, right? And that all stems from who you are. What kind of people do you run around you? And are you happy with the people you're bringing around you? Because eventually, if you find yourself never fitting in, eventually it's just you and who you're picking and who you're signaling to. Okay, I think that's it. I think I did it. Is that all I want to say? I think so. Yeah. Be careful what image you're putting out into the world unless you're ready for people to misunderstand it. But also... For yourself, that's the worst part is like you misunderstanding it. The worst part of all of this is not having a relationship with yourself so you don't even know yourself. You're getting confused. All these men who are chasing women and getting Bugattis and getting rich, again, you're going to wonder why good, wholesome women aren't dating you. But it's so obvious to me. You're attracting gold diggers for a reason. You're a man who is only good enough for a gold digger. What good are you to a traditional modest woman? I don't understand. Money is not that impressive to a religious woman, unless she's not a religious woman. And in that case, you're a secularist. And in that case, your whole schema is built on nothing. Like your whole value system is built off nothing. Like if you're a secularist and you don't believe in God and and a specific God at that, you don't follow the specific God's tenets to a T, then you're just making it up. And if you're making it up, what are you signaling to the world? I don't get it. You know what I mean? Anyways, you do you. I wish you all the best. Have a great day. And I'll talk to you guys next podcast. Bye. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Then